So what we have today, the selfie that puts all other selfies to shame. Let's focus on that. Hey everybody, and welcome to After Chat. I'm Tom. And I'm Ryan. And today, we're going to start off with the ultimate selfie. Uh, because your selfie will never be as cool as this selfie, no matter what you do. Except mm. maybe take it on Mars. Mm. Why, why, do you, why, why do I say this, Ryan? Because this... I need to make something in that noise. Because this selfie was taken off of the ISS from the outside. The uh, Expedition 41 team, the crew that's currently up there on the ISS, they took up on the last trip up a Nikon D2X, which I had to go look up because it's a little bit older camera. It's been up there for a while. They, 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 they just took it up. They said they just took it up in the in the article. Maybe it was a, a specific guy. They've, they've had they, Nikon equipment on the station. For yeah, no, but this this, this was a specific... Oh, no, sorry, the 10.5 millimeter just yeah, went up. Yeah, that's like what that. it must have been. It must yeah. have just brought up the... They just brought up a, a specially designed Nikkor 10.5 millimeter fisheye that was designed specifically to be shot in outer space. I think they had to deal with how cold it was. Mm -hmm. So they had to have the equipment uh, updated a little bit. But So they took it out on, a, on an EVA with them, and the first thing they did before they started documenting what they were doing was they took a bunch of selfies. Um, all these are available on NASA's Flickr. <laughs> uh, so I'm just amused NASA has a Flickr. Uh, but oh, you yeah, can, NASA, I mean, the, the Twitter oh, yeah. is where sure they went first. but Probably. The, the two astronauts who were out there, uh, Reed Weissman and Alexander Gerst from the, the European Space Agency, um, I believe they're both German, uh, they they were out there and they were taking selfies with it before they got started. So if your selfie doesn't have an arm of the ISS and the Earth in the background, it's not <laughs> as cool as these guys, all right? No, it is very cool. That's one of those kind of little known, is the, the Nikon equipment that's up there is basically just Nikon equipment like there's yeah. not like a specialty equipment except for the, like the fisheye lens and a couple of things yeah but yeah a lot of the stuff they took up is just stock off the shelf stuff yeah I think there was a, the 300 millimeter 2.8 that they have up there is funny too it's on the big the big 300 millimeter it's like surprisingly big camera equipment to just be like on the station right yeah now. it's <laughs> like they shoot out the window and it's I guess they take really interesting stuff yeah well, that's cool hmm. they're worth following on Twitter because yeah they are I think it's Reed, Reed Weissman he's, he's the one who's, he's a, one of the photographers Yep. He takes a lot of stuff out the window and it's like, I don't know where this is, but this looks pretty cool. And he's like, it's the big, <laughs> they show it in space, this huge, huge lens. You know, the funny part about that is it's like, they'll say it's like a, they take long exposure stuff and it's like, it has no gravity. So yeah. it just, it's fine. It just sits there. Yeah. It just kind of sits <laughs> in the window. So. All right. So this, this is yours. So this is mine. Um, cause apparently anything that has to do with Canon is mine. Yeah. Um, so. Canon is now finally, well, I shouldn't say finally. They've, they've been in the ultra-wide lens market. Uh, but they are releasing an 11 to 24 millimeter f4, which, when you look at it, makes sense. It's about the same shape and size as the 8 to 15, which is also an f4. has the giant dome end on it that all ultra-wides have. But here's the thing. They want three grand for it. The... The, the um, 16 to 35, the one that this kind of steps in front of, is only 1700 bucks for the L. Hmm. Hi, Elliot. I'll let you lay down. So, by the way, he has almost as many Twitter followers as I do. He's had Two. Twitter for like a week. <laughs> yeah, three. Um, <laughs> and he's only had Twitter for like a week. Um, I have several dozen Twitter followers. By several, I mean like two. I think he follows you. He doesn't follow me, and I, I didn't see that. I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little too loud for for a little six year old to follow. All right, but yeah, for for the sixteen to thirty five two eight, if they get seventeen hundred, it's like, I mean, it must, it must, it must take beautiful pictures. That's the thing; the quality must be there. It's, but it's still an F four, which maybe people won't think of that being the quality. I like, in the, obviously. You see F4 as being lower quality glass than the 2.8 line, but it's not always necessarily true. That's true, because when I when I rented the, the, the fisheye and I shot concerts with it for the festival, it was every picture I took with it, as long as I focused, was beautiful. I mean, oh, yeah. the, the ones that weren't high quality pictures were ones that I screwed up, not that the lens had any problem with. And when you're that wide, it doesn't really matter anyway. It's really yeah. just the amount of light that you let in. 
Yeah. When you when you're that wide, the focus, the depth of field isn't really a thing. That's true. It doesn't almost doesn't exist. So it's it's really just the amount of light that's coming in the lens, which is why the the fourteen twenty four is so big because the two point eight lets in so much light. Yeah. So if, if you've got a a comment or you you wanted to say hey no Tom you're out of line three thousand is the right amount to say to ask for that. Put it in the comments down below because I really want to see other people's opinion. I think it's too much when, when the sixteen thirty five is only you know is sub two thousand. I think it's too much, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe someone thinks that that's fine. I mean, I I, I also don't use a lot of ultra wide angles, mm. so I don't have the experience to say no. It's really worth it to get down to eleven to twenty four. Well, three thousand dollars is is a lot considering the Nikon. The Nikon yeah. is two thousand dollars retail. For the 1424 2.8, yeah, which is you know, it's not built better than Nikon, it's not going to be better image quality. It's yeah. like uh, the 11 is cool, but what is three millimeters? Like, yeah, it's not a thousand dollars. No, it's, it's so it's like, you know, like I said, I mean, maybe I'm be, missing it something. Here. I mean, it could be. I mean, yeah, three millimeters yeah. could make a big difference. Well, I do notice it on the fisheye. I mean, between eight and 11 on the fisheye was huge. Like, oh yeah, it does. I mean, because it, it, it's exponential down to yeah. But oh, yeah. It, maybe it, it, maybe know, it's a bigger. I'll have to try it and see if it actually matters. Yeah. So when Bar Lenses gets it in, I'll, I'll I'll get on that list and see if we can get our hands on that and review it. So earlier this month, uh, Plexi Drone, an ultra portable modular aerial photography drone, went live. We love and, drones. Yeah, <laughs> went live and made almost three hundred thousand dollars. So. Yeah, yeah, they they were only asking for uh, one hundred and fifteen, yeah. so they they have come so and gone. Yeah, so they're screwed. Um, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So it's, it's ultra modular in that you can change out your your motors and rudders and blades. It's all meant to be changed out more easily. Um, the only thing, I mean, they all already sort of are modular, so it's weird to see somebody. Well, no, the big thing they're they're calling out is if you damage like a motor on this, you can. Put in a new motor. If you damage a motor on like a DJI Phantom, you have to send it to them. They have to take it apart, place the, a new motor in, and send it back to you. That doesn't seem right. I've seen kits that come with extra motors. Like, like that—that's their claim. Is that you know the bigger ones are you can't just take the part off and put a new part in. That's kind of strange. I mean, there are there there are kits that come with extra motors in them. So I don't know what the what they. I, one of the big things is that the the. DJI's are big, but if you're shooting anything seriously, you're building the thing yourself anyway. So yeah. it's sort of it's a funny. Well, that, that's the other thing about this is you could hook up because it, it runs on Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. That's that's the weird thing is it starts on Bluetooth. You can convert it over to they give you a huh? yeah it's a Bluetooth. They give you what they call their hub, mm -hmm. which your Bluetooth talks to the hub, and then the hub can talk to it and give you more range. Yeah, and then you can also. Thing. They have all of the. It's almost like a like a, an Arduino where you can actually plug in your own six uh, six channel controller into it. Mm -hmm. So you, you kind of are building your own at that point. You could use it as a base to start building your own. But if you're mm -hmm. doing that, like you said, you're building your own. It seems a little strange to go Bluetooth first, but I mean, I'm sure that's lighter and lower power drain and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, there's not no range out of Bluetooth, so you almost you almost absolutely need the hub thing. Yeah, which I'm sure is extra ex expense. And then no, nope, it's in the base package. It's in the base it's package. The, I, I went to their Indiegogo. It's in their their base package. The the when you start adding on to it, you start adding on like the case, which looks like it came out of Tron, mm -hmm. and uh, extra just, pieces. I mean, stuff. it's nice. It's nice to see it where it's easily portable and stuff. But yeah, built-in I mean, camera is a little weird too. Yeah, it's small. It's, very it's small. small, but like when you go up to the higher ones, you can actually get mounts to you just attach your camera to and then attach it. So you have the built-in camera, or you can override that and put your GoPro in. So yeah, hmm. it looks interesting. Uh, I was more impressed that they had hit their target in like a week and a half. Yeah, but any I mean any sort of small drone thing like that, it's gonna be yeah, it's very popular. Yeah, because seven hundred dollars is not. Twelve hundred dollars. Exactly, and that's the big thing. It's it's seven hundred bucks to get into drone photography now. Like they're lowering that that threshold, mm -hmm. which is something we've been looking forward to because I don't have twelve hundred bucks to go to DJI. Right yeah. So, so um, the flash disc portable uh, by the F Stoppers is a 
a small portable diffuser for speed lights. It's a little ring which folds up like a reflector and it's a circular softbox about yay big. Uh, it sits, sits on the top of any speed light. It's elastic band so it just pops right on. It's very, it's very secure. Um, they're beautiful little light modifiers for speed lights. It's big, yeah. the big things. They're, they're $50 which is kind of a lot for a modifier but they fold down into a little, a little disc they're very easy to store in a bag, and they make they make some very nice light. Uh, there's they're 12 inch, 12 inch when expanded, and they have a little shield so you're not shooting right out the front. It's it bounces up into the whole soft box. I mean, the results that they show is very very good. Yeah, what I like is the fact that the back side of it is a gray card. Mm. So even if you get your gray card, not really a big deal. Oh look, I have that. Click there you go. Yeah, it's one of those things. That I the way I shoot, it's almost perfect. I almost need to buy these as soon as I can. Um, I would use them every day. Yeah. No, I, I would definitely use them. In fact, um, one of the things that they were showing on the F-Stoppers website is people were they, were, they were using it at a concert, but because it's a softbox at this point, it doesn't flash everywhere and blind people, and they were getting really good results out of it, even like in a venue. Hmm. That, and no one seemed to be upset with them using it. Hmm. So I was like, oh, that's different. Because normally you don't use flashes in a venue like that. And they were able to do it and just kind of get it. They were only using it as fill light. But they were able to use it as fill light, yeah. which is nice. So yeah, I, I was on Amazon and I was look, grabbing something else because uh, I was looking for little clips that we can put in around the bricks so we can hang up pictures in here <laughs> that don't actually drill in. But our bricks are don't the mortar isn't recessed enough. No, no. So I had to. We can hang stuff. It's fine. Yeah. Um, but I, I was there and I was I clicked the link. And I'm like, add it to my cart. So it's sitting in my cart. I just I don't have the money to buy. I need buy. three of them. Is the issue. It's like I one of them doesn't do anything for me. I was gonna buy two. Uh, yeah, I only need one, but I figured if we had two in the studio, we'd we need two. That's I need at least two to shoot anything. Yeah, it's, but that's the point. So hopefully they won't run out this time because that was the thing when they put these out the first time. Yeah. they sold out in under a day. Mm -hmm. But I think they've got um, like a continuous supply chain now mm -hmm. because they saw how quick they moved them last time. Yeah, so, and then that's a lot of money for those. So yeah, it's fifty bucks, but it's absolutely worth it. Oh yeah. All right, I, I will get two of them at some point, and we'll have three in the studio, I'm sure, by the end of the year. So, mm -hmm. fifty bucks isn't hard to come by uh, when you know I'm actually shooting things. Yeah. <laughs> so you tell me about this one. Yeah, I was I was talking about this earlier today. Uh, there are thieves, and there is a huge reward out for this, by the way, a 10 k reward if you know anything about this. Um, out in Fremont, California, which is you know a big industrial city out there, you know there's a lot of companies that do like their their uh, manufacturing out there. It's almost as big as city of industry. Uh, but three kind of big names got robbed this past week: uh, Core Microsystems, Mac House Productions, which are they, they make some gear, but they mostly are production houses. But the big one was Black Magic Design. Now. It, Black Magic is a big name to steal from, especially when you take one point two million dollars worth of equipment, and I mean this is high end cinema equipment. And apparently, you know they they, they caught one guy on the surveillance footage with a pretty clear shot. I would hope the Black Magic would have good yeah, surveillance fine. equipment because they make camera equipment, um, cinema equipment. Uh, but apparently these guys knew exactly what they were taking from all three. They basically walked in, grabbed the stuff, hauled it out in the truck, and left. Like, the, So they, there's a $10,000 reward for anyone who can help them. They, uh, if you go to Blackmagic's YouTube channel, it is like the front thing on their YouTube channel is the is just, they just published it. They just put it out there and said, if you know who this guy is, contact us. We'll give you ten grand." Uh, because they they got hit for $1.2 um, uh, Mac House got hit for this is why I got a cheat sheet back. Uh, Mac House got hit for one hundred and fifty thousand, and Core Microsystems for two hundred thousand. Um, and what they got from Black Magic was three hundred and fifty cameras. So imagine just the fact that they moved three hundred and fifty yeah, cameras. A lot of stuff. Um, sure, a bunch exactly. of computers, and you know, combined, they're, they're saying it's like one and a half millions. Um, hmm. so they they do know what was stolen and they're going to look for it but unfortunately 
the local police and the FBI are pretty well convinced that these are probably going to show up in black markets outside of the U.S., so it'll be a lot harder to track down. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's an unfortunate steal. An unfortunate, unfortunate steal. It's an unfortunate event to have that much stuff stolen. Uh, I know we're on the wrong coast, and as far as I know, most of the people who watch us are on this coast, but if you come across somebody, you know, even if you, you know, just be a little vigilant and be on eBay and be like, see like, oh shit, this guy's got a lot of 10 black magic things, <laughs> you know, call the FBI. That's probably, probably not a good thing. It'd be pretty funny. Just like, hey, oh, to be a star. Hey, that guy, that guy's selling them on eBay. So Nikon Asia released a video showing you the inside of Nikon lenses. So it's, they talk about how the VR works, how the Nikon technology and some of the coding stuff. Basically, they take you inside of a lot of little components and inside the lens casing and show you the kind of the magic of what makes Nikon work. Yeah. It's, it's a really cool video. I actually took the time to watch it. It's only about five minutes. I think it's like 5.03 or something. <laughs> it's a pretty short video, but they go through it. It's, it's It may be Nikon Asia, but it's all in English. Uh, it's just text and music. It's nobody talking. Um, it's got a nice dubstep beat in the background because apparently... It's always a party at Nikon. Uh, but oh, it, it's actually some of those things that like you look at it and you go, oh, that's how that works. Because I like, like I understand in my head how VR works or VC, OS, IS, whatever. Uh, but until you actually see the parts moving and the way they're supposed to, you go, oh, that makes, now it makes even more sense. Like you're like, how does that work? Well, oh, hey, yeah, okay, that's how it works. So yeah, it's actually uh, even educational, even if, even if you're familiar with lenses. It's worth watching because they actually explain a lot of the actual technology in it too. In very high level terms, it's not very technical where you're going to be like, oh, I don't understand that. Like it's, it's pretty simple. Hmm. Very cool. So, yeah. It's a nice video. Yeah. And Sony is apparently returning to the megapixel wars with a 46 megapixel full frame mirrorless camera potentially um, in the first part of 2015. Um, so it's interesting to see them pushing it even further. I know that's not a big surprise considering what the D810 is and the, the A, A series and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But it kind of must be interesting for Canon at this point. Yeah, because Canon's fallen behind in the, uh, hey, let's have... Yeah, I know I know their whole argument is we're, we're taking quality over quantity. You know, okay, you know, less pic megapixels but more accurate color, more accurate, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if that's actually happening at this no, point. No, it is. But, uh, yeah, Sony's looking at it, and, and uh, it looks like it's going to be part of the A7 series, whatever the next A7, was the A7 QZM4, do Bobby, blue, blue, blue. Uh, whatever the next, you know, and if it's coming about early next year, that means they're they're pretty long, far along in this process. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, but the lens ecosystem for Sony is not there yet. No. They're still missing some pieces, so it's it, like, that's the more important part, when this, this is going to come along with some big lens upgrades, I'm sure. That's, oh, yeah. That's gonna, it's going to have to. Yeah, I mean, they're serious. It's not... Yeah. The, the A-series is some serious business, and it's, yeah. it's very interesting. So, yeah, that, but the fact that they're going to come out with with their high megapixel, the 810 has the high megapixel, hmm. the Canon's sitting there going... I'm sure we'll see something interesting. It's just a matter of what their direction is. Um, yeah. And, I mean, that's the noise noise thing has been lost. Like, the, for a while, the D, D5 D Mark III was a, was a big contender in the low noise, high ISO thing. Yep. And it's just, just, it's been overrun by a bunch of cameras now. Yeah. Especially at the Nikon, the DF was funny. Yeah. It's like the little Hipsomatic camera beat the shit out of everything else. <laughs> yeah. Beat, I mean, beat the D4S and beat the... Well, I mean, there's a lot less electronics in the DF, too. Yeah. Because it has no view. You know, it it's a D4 sensor with a little better processing and no no big thing. Yeah. Huh. That's so. Yeah, Sony's getting there. All right. Well, that, that, that's the bulk of my news for this week, unless you got something that I missed. Nope. I saw that Young, Young Nuo is releasing a new set of triggers with um, an LCD screen on top that will backwards compatible, I think, for the next couple of months. Oh, that would be cool. See. It's 306 series, whatever it is. There, whatever it's, it's compatible with all their triggers, but their set of transceivers that actually show you what's going on, as opposed to right. the transceivers they have now, which are a series of blinking lights and bullshit. You know, like my photics, pretty much. Yeah. 
Right. The photics are dumb triggers, but I love them. No, well, I mean, Young Newell has a set of TTL, TTL transceivers like that function theoretically, like Pocket Wizard, that are impossible to set up because they have no screen or no like interface at all. They have interface, but it's like a series of lights and weird button press maneuvers and stuff it takes to set them into anything. Like if you want to put it manual, it takes this weird set of pushes and it, they're terrible. But with a screen that tells you what's going where, I could see them being usable. Yeah, it'll be something to look at. I mean, it can't be harder to use than that Speedlight EX550. Yeah, I think it's bad. That, that thing is horrible. I love it as a, as a flash and it's fine if I just use it for TTL and nothing else, but try and change any settings on it. I, the 580, the young new old, I think it was the EX580 or whatever, the, yeah. the young new flash, it, it's very good. Oh yeah. We just would need some triggers for it and all that kind of stuff. So. But yeah. All right. We, we have a lot of fun doing this. Um, one thing I am working on, um, as far as, as far as the, uh, Aperture Chat series stuff goes, is I am finally going, to, I've started writing more of the, uh, Crash Course, because, uh, we did the, we, when we first started out, we did the, the first one, which was the Crash Course and the Exposure Triangle, which got great reception, and I just have never had the time to follow up and do the other ones I, I've wanted to do. So I've got um, two more. I have a list of seven crash courses, um, and I'm working on the second and the third one right now. Uh, so what I did was I put on the on the blog uh, yesterday, uh, and I'll put it up on Facebook later. If you have questions that you want to see us answer in these crash courses, let us know. Send us just shoot me an email. Put it on our Facebook comment. Comment on a video. You just put in a question you want for one of the videos anywhere. And we will try and work it into the appropriate uh, videos because, like, if you ask me about, you know, color correction, I'm not going to put that in the one about apertures or anything like that. But I will get, uh, we'll try and work all the questions that we get into the videos. I've already got a bunch for the uh, the next one I'm, I'm working on is on the camera modes mm -hmm. and explaining what all the different modes are. And I've already got a bunch of questions, uh, line, you know, people have asked me about that. So I've got a good base to do that, which is also part of what spurred me to get back into working on it. Um, so if you have questions about basically anything about your camera, whether it's a DSLR or a mirrorless or a point and shoot, uh, as long as it's not about your cell phone camera, uh, I might do one on that, just why not? Anyway, people who take pictures with their iPhones that aren't selfies is a thing apparently. Um, so yeah, if you've got the questions, let us know. Absolutely. Uh, and plus, we'll we'll just answer things. I mean, if it's in a you know if it's in there, we'll also just answer it, mm -hmm. which is nice. Uh, we've, we've had some good discussions with people over that and about questions they've had on you know, just left up as, as YouTube comments. So feel free to join the conversation. I know I haven't made that a thing in a while, but it really, it it seems to be a thing for us. We can make this a conversation. Everything can be better. Uh, I'd be happier. Would you be happier? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's all I got for this week. Yeah, sounds about right. Sweet, you folded something up. Guess what? I'm going to throw it. See you later. Okay, that was good. That's how we get rid of the cat. <laughs> I forgot he's a cat. Things that don't cost anything are the best toys.